every time somebody asks me this question, I'm like, we're going to be a multi-million dollar consulting firm owned by two black women. That's the ultimate goal. But in reality, our goal is to help these athletes and help athletes to learn that, you know, you can make money off the court, off the field. Welcome to the Game of Her Own podcast, a podcast about women who work in sports. I'm your host, Jahan Blake. After 15 years of working for three major league teams, including the Boston Red Sox, Los Angeles Dodgers, and the Chicago Cubs, I discovered the one thing I loved the most was helping women in sports shatter glass ceilings and take their seat at the table. I loved it so much that I made a business out of it. I have the honor of coaching high performing women in the sports and entertainment industry and supporting them as they go after exactly what they want in their career. So if you are feeling tired of waiting on the sidelines, done being overlooked for promotions, and you're ready to pull ahead of the pack and take your career to the next level, girl, I'm here for it. I also created the Game of Her Own podcast to support you as well. We are here to share the stories of incredible women who work in sports and entertainment. These leaders and trailblazers will inspire you with their success and the lessons they've learned along the way to the top. Ladies, there is nothing like women empowering women. I am so honored you're here. It is the end of the month, which means it is time for the series Off the Beaten Path, where I interview women who have started their own business within the sports and entertainment industry. It is scary to start your own business. You put yourself out there. You have to be vulnerable. You have to take risk. You have to remove the safety net that you had from a full-time job. I am so excited for you guys to hear today from Celia Newman and Chris Ross Francis, and they are the co-founders of Up Next Sports Consulting. I'm telling you right now, they have been through it all. They actually met over Instagram and formed this friendship. And I'm, you know what, I don't wanna give it all away, but they are going to talk to you today about what they do at Up Next Sports Consulting, how they work with athletes, how when they built their company and opened the doors, they immediately had clients. I mean, that's everyone's dream and sort of like part of their nightmare as well, right? I'm gonna open my doors, are they gonna come? These athletes showed up and were ready to work with them. They're about to have their one year anniversary. And I can't wait for you guys to hear about their goal, their big goal, their big vision. It's going to inspire you. So are you all ready? All right, friends, it is time. Let's do this. Chris, Celia, welcome to the Game of Her Own podcast. I am so excited you both are here. Hello. We are excited as well. Thank you. Yes. It's our pleasure. Yes, I am so, I've been looking forward to this. I loved watching you guys on social media. Social media is great and also a little weird because you're just like, you know people and what they're doing, but you haven't met them in person. So it's kind of, sometimes it's a little creepy, but I've enjoyed watching the work that you guys have been doing. So before we jump into it and talk about your business, take us back in time. Tell us when you first fell in love with sports. So my first time falling in love with in sports was when I was in middle school, roughly, you know, six, sixth grade. I used to go to the basketball court and I used to see the guys play. And I'm like, I want to do that. I want to I want to play basketball like that. I want to do what they're doing. So I kind of used to go to the court every day and played and stuff like that. And it just became like my passion. Like I was like, I love basketball and I just always wanted to be around basketball so I kind of like throughout my whole life I kind of been around the sport been around the game so my passion started from when I was in the sixth grade going to the blacktop and looking at the guys play so you had no problem just jumping in and playing and like just getting dirty with the boys I was a tomboy I was a tomboy I was a little rough (laughs) (laughs) me too I wasn't like a girly girl so I was just like okay I want to get in there I want to dribble the ball I want to like, I used to think I was Allen Iverson. Like, I used to be on the court, like, oh, I'm Allen Iverson on the court. Had the headband on, had the braids going back. That was, like, my first time really falling in love with the game. You had no fear. No, no fear. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Celia, what about you? When did you first fall in love with sports? Mine is almost similar. Like, so I was the only girl on my street, and all the guys, like, there was this one house that had a basketball go. So I would walk down there and just kind of watch. 
And then one day they was like, come on, you want to shoot? And I started shooting and I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. And then like my mom put me in this little rec league when I was nine and I've been hooked ever since. <laughs> wow. All right. When did you realize that you, you guys were going to make this into, like you wanted to work in sports? Did you grow up thinking about like, what, I mean, there's so much pressure nowadays on, on younger, like on students and like trying to figure out what they want to do with their careers. When did you guys realize that you wanted to work in sports? I kind of realized later on in life, I was one of those players that always thought I was going to play forever until I got hurt. And so it didn't really dawn on me until I was probably like five, six, seven years ago. Like when I was like, okay, I can put up the ball now. Let me get on the business side of sports and really help athletes and prevent them from going through things that I went through as an athlete from, you know, not having the right representation or, you know, not knowing how to do a resume to play overseas or do a video, like edit videos or, you know, just connecting with the right people and building connections to get to that next level. A lot of athletes don't have that concept. Well, it's a little bit better now since because of social media, but, you know, a lot of kids or athletes really don't know what it takes to get to the next level. And so I kind of wanted to put my expertise on, you know, business and the game and put it together and give it to athletes and mentor mm. them and, you know, help them along the way. Mm, yeah. So you, you saw that gap and Celia, tell me a little bit. So you got your master's in sports and wellness leadership. Like what made you think that, okay, I went, you know, finished undergrad. Now I'm going to go and continue my, you know, further my education in sports and get my master's. What made you, what made you go that route? Honestly, like, after undergrad, like I knew I wanted to be a trainer. So that's kind of what I got my bachelor's in. But once I started actually working in the field, I got burnt out really fast. So I knew I had to pinpoint exactly what I wanted to do. So um, that's kind of how I narrowed it into working directly with athletes, either in an academic component or like personal and career development. So I knew I wanted to further my education. So that's kind of how I decided to go ahead and get my master's because I knew I wanted to be in some type of leadership role, either running my own gym or starting a business. I knew I had to keep going, you know, to figure it out. And once I graduated with my master's, that's kind of when it started getting to the right path that I wanted. You saw a path forward when you, once you got your master's and a lot of women will work, you know, a lot of humans, just forget it, men or women will work themselves to death and think that burnout is a part of the job, right? It's like the cost of doing business. So I, what I'm hearing you say is that you were like, no, this isn't for me. I got to figure out a better, a better way. Where'd that come from? I mean, I was working like 70 hours a week because I was a trainer. So we had like morning treatment, uh, afternoon treatment, then we had practice and then night treatment I was like I'm only getting paid 40,000 like why am I doing this you know so I was like this is not the route I want to take as far as working with athletes so then I had to figure it out pinpoint exactly what I wanted to do like I knew I wanted to work with athletes but at that time I wasn't in the right path that I wanted because I was exhausted and I was like I don't want to feel like this every single day this is not it Mm. so that's kind of how I went on to get the leadership degree because I knew this is not what I want to do. So I need to figure out a better way so I can enjoy what I'm doing and be passionate about what I'm doing. And yes, of course, make the money, but I want to do what I love to do every day and not feel like I'm exhausted. Wow. And there's so many people who are listening that who are probably inspired, not probably, they're inspired because, <laughs> you know, I particularly hear from women, given the nature of the work that I do, but there's that, I mean, I just had one person who called me and she was crying. She was crying because it was impacting her personal life and she cannot, she can't stop, right? She can't get away and she's not sure how, what to do and how to approach it. Uh, and it sounds like you just said, nope, this isn't for me. I'm right. And you guys, you can't see, you can't see Celia, but she is shaking her head like, nope, nope, it was not, it was not working. So that, that's inspiring. Okay. So tell everybody, the reason we're here and we're having this interview is the name of the series is Off the Beaten Path. And it's about women who no longer work for an organization. They went out and created their own organization and people work for them and they have clients. And so tell everybody, Celia or Chris, whoever wants to 
to take this lead, but tell us what you guys do and what your consulting firm is and what it's all about. Well, uh, Up Next Sports is a sports consulting firm, and we pretty much help athletes with their branding and marketing to help them get to the next level. We also help them on and off the court as well. We also take in athletes that want to start businesses. We help them start businesses as far as, you know, creating a website, designing a business card, or, you know, anything from like getting them an LLC. We help them start a nonprofit if they're interested in that. We also help them with learning different ways to make money using like social media. And we just help them with job placements, even though either one of us are agents, but we do have the connections to connect those athletes to get those jobs. And so that's what pretty much up next is like that's what we stand for and we also stand on like, you know, being transparent, being honest and being uh effective. Yeah, that's pretty much what up next sports is about. You guys are co founders. How did you how did you guys meet? Instagram. <laughs> Tell us more. Oh, I'm so glad I asked. <laughs> so Christian had DM me because she was having an event in my city. And I guess my name got around to her and she wanted me to come to her event and speak about my experiences, I guess, as an athlete, because she was having an event for girls basketball players here. And her organization was called like it's called Life Above the Rim. So when she reached out to me, I had already had something planned that weekend. But we kept in contact. So we just kept talking on the phone. And I just got a really good vibe from Christian just from talking to her. So we talked for like over a year. And then finally, I was like, so I've been having this idea about up next, but I can't do this by myself. And she, I was like, I love your energy. Like, I just feel like we would do great at this. So I was like, what do you think? She was hesitant at first. And then she called me back maybe a few days later. And she's like, okay, I'm in. Let's do it. And I mean... The rest was history. Like, we just kind of clicked. You know how you just have some people, like, you feel them. Like, you feel like they're going to be a match for you. So that's mm-hmm. kind of how we we vibed. And they came about. Up next came about. Wow. So co-founders met on Instagram. And it sounds like you courted each other for about a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were dating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you decided to finally literally get married and start a business together. Were you scared? Were you nervous? Talk a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. We was definitely nervous and scared. (laughs) (laughs) We was definitely, like, planning stage. It took us forever because we even, like, oh, let's wait. We waited for a little bit. And then we was like, no, let's do it. And then we just back again. We was like, no, let's wait. And then when COVID hit, and I was like, man, this is the perfect time. Like, since COVID hit, like, we can plan. We can, you know. Uh, work on getting connections, work on getting clients, and just building our brand. From there, it was just like magic. It just took us in the right direction. Like, yeah, we was definitely nervous. We was definitely scared. So, <laughs> yeah. but it all came together in the end. What like, that first three months, like we had six clients, and they they came back to back to back to back, and we was like, okay, was we expecting this? No. You opened your doors, and right off the bat, had six clients. Is that what you just said? Yeah. That is, I mean, talk yes, about man. putting something out into the universe and it just, I mean, y'all did that. I mean, you know that, but I literally have the chance. <laughs> like you, you guys, you did that. You, you finally, you <laughs> took that leap of faith and you, people were ready and they, they needed you. What a huge, what a huge compliment. So tell me, what was the, the scariest part about taking that leap of faith? Would anyone want to work with us? Would anyone call us? Like, would our phone ring? You know, it's like, those are things you think about when you first open a business. Like, are we going to make any money? Is anybody going to know who we are? You know, it's just a lot of things go through your mind. Uh How did you quiet that self-doubt? Each other, basically. Yeah, we pretty much, we pretty much motivated each other. I mean, it's nice that you had each other. Uh, Celia, you were right, right? You couldn't do that. You couldn't do it alone. Mm-mm. So, I mean, so like it, when I have doubts, Christian is like, no, you're not going to say that, <laughs> you know, or if she has doubts, I'm just there to tell her like, you got this, you know, like, because like we're in two different cities. I'm in Memphis and she's in Dallas. So some things like Christian, I handle and she'll call me before and be like, uh, okay, I don't, I don't know if I can do this. And I'll be like, yes, you can girl. You got this. We just kind of pump each other up to keep each other motivated. Have you guys met in person? Yeah. <laughs> okay. My oh, yeah. so <laughs> plenty of times. Plenty of times. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah. So, I mean, so our last guest, um, last month for off the beaten path, they have never met in person. Oh, wow. But same, similar story, right? They just, they met each other virtually and just they knew, like, they didn't know that they were going to start the company together, but they just had that, they just felt it. We're supposed to work on something together. Um, we are friends and we are, I, I think they might even call themselves soulmates. And so, and they started, and then they ended up working together. Um, so I thought I had another like story like that. I was like, stop it. Like, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, no, no, we met, we met before. <laughs> like, I, I have to meet people in person. I'm one of them people. I have to meet people in person just to feel your energy. Like it's so much you can feel over the phone or, you know what I'm saying? So like when I met CC in person, it was like magic. Like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't get no bad vibes, no bad feelings. Like it was all good. Good. And you made sure you weren't being catfished, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to make sure you weren't catfish. All right. So tell me up next consulting, what is your overall, like, what's your goal? I know you talked about what your business does, but I know you guys are thinking long term here. So, like, what's your big goal? Every time somebody asks me this question, I'm like, we're going to be a multi million dollar consulting firm owned by two black women. That's the ultimate goal. But in reality, our goal is to help these athletes and help athletes to learn that, you know, you can make money off the court, off the field. And we just want them to know, like, it's different avenues to make money and to learn that just different avenues like marketing and branding and just teaching them. Like, and I think that's where me and CC, like our passion is, is like we love to help people, especially mm -hmm. athletes, because we've been in certain situations where, you know, we didn't know what to do as an athlete for our, like both of our um, history and, you know, what we know about the game and what we know about business. I think that what we can take, you know, in the long run with helping these athletes. That's what my vision is, just to help athletes and be a multi-million dollar company. <laughs> <laughs> Period. <laughs> All right. So everyone has heard it here. I've actually heard you say that before. So I was very excited to ask that question. <laughs> Wanted to make sure it was still the same goal. I can't wait until that happens. And then I tell everybody, like, I knew them before when they had that goal. Go back and listen to that their podcast on how they got started. Talk to everybody what it's like to work with athletes. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, ooh, girl. <laughs> it really it depends. depends on the athlete. Yeah, Look at that. It depends on the athlete. Yeah. It depends on the athlete. Like, the clients that we had so far, we had good clients. The clients, uh, like, people that I just worked with before, uh, we're working with athletes you kind of got to babysit them a little bit you know but my experience been it's been good with our clients but mm -hmm. athletes off the court I mean that's not our clients I, I feel like we have to babysit them a little bit but I love it like I love it I love to mentor I love to teach so it, it's been good for me it depends on the athlete because like I worked at Memphis I was an academic advisor for a football team and I was basically like hand holding you know like come on you gotta go to class I got to go check, make sure you're in class, got to make sure you're doing your work. So it just depends. And then once I got through them, you know, they picked it up and they took responsibility. But it really just depends on your approach, too, because some athletes, you have to approach them a different way to get through to them, to get what you want out of them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hearing patience, customized approach. It's not one size fits all. Mentoring which is a, a, is that a big part of the work that y'all are doing? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. And what else? I imagine trust is a huge factor. Very. <laughs> we pride ourselves on trust, being transparent and being effective. That's what up next stands for. So we definitely with our athletes, we do have to build that trust. We have to uh, be able to communicate with them. We have to be transparent with them because, you know, people can sense when you're not genuine and transparent so we do have to you know also be patient and a great listener as well and understanding hey jahan here i hope you're enjoying the interview i am sure you are thinking about your own career right now and how you can pull out in front of the pack to take your career to the next level for 18 years supporting women in sports has been my favorite part of my career and i would love to support you whether it's joining my free game of her own community or one of my one-on-one -on -one coaching programs. I am here for you. Send me a message at jblake at jahanblake.com or DM me on Instagram at jahanblake. And let's schedule a time to have a free session.
I cannot wait to hear from you. All right, let's get back to why you're here. So if I was a athlete and let's say I was a basketball player, which I am not, I am really bad, but say I was a basketball player and I needed your services. Like what, what would you talk to me about doing? Like what, how would you, how would you help me? Basically, I would ask you, you know, what's your, your, your future goals? What, what are you wanting to do? Like I said before in the interview, like we pride on ourselves on teaching athletes financial literacy, also building a business off the court, um, making money using marketing and branding. So we will ask you, like, what is it that you see yourself in the next five years as a business, you know, or a household name? So with a household name that goes with your marketing and branding, you can get paid off of, you know, Instagram, YouTube, you know, endorsement deals, sponsorships and stuff like that. Or you want to be a businessman or a businesswoman. You know, you want to start your own clothing line or you want to start your own T-shirt line or something Whatever business you want to start, we can pretty much assist you and guide you in the right direction while you're playing. We can help you get placement as well. Like, do you want to go, you know, overseas? Do you see yourself going to the next level or stuff like that? But we not only cater to athletes, but we cater to people that are, you know, in sports as well. We have one client. She's a a sports mom. Like her son was ranked. I think he was like top 10 or something like that. And we help her with her branding. Um, we has uh, a guy, he has his own, his own college and he's deal with athletes as well. We help him with his branding and marketing. So, and we had a form, we got a former WNBA player. We help her with her branding and marketing. She also wants to start a business. So we pretty much help anybody that want to be in the sports industry. I love that. Okay. So tell me what, you guys are doing incredible work. You opened your doors and like you built it and they came like, that's incredible. What, what are you most proud of? And I'll ask that question to both of you. I'm most proud of how far we've come in such a short period of time, just because we started in a pandemic where you, no one expected you to do good or exceed. And we exceeded all of our expectations. I know we wrote out our goals when we first started. And then we're just slowly checking them off, you know, staying on target, staying focused. So I I would say I'm most proud of how the projects we've made in just a short, like our year anniversary is coming up next month. And we're like, wow, we did that all this in one year. I'm most proud of is our foundation. I think our foundation and what we stand for and what we're doing is what I pride myself on because I don't really know any other sports consulting firm that's doing what we're doing, trying to help athletes. Because a lot of, like, like a lot of agencies and sports consulting firms, they they try to take away, take from the athlete. They want to make money off the athlete. And we want to make money with the athlete. And so I just think our foundation and what we stand for is what I'm proud of because I don't think anyone else is doing it. I don't think anyone is teaching young athletes it's okay to start a business, having a backup plan or a setting a foundation for themselves. So that's what I proud myself on. I like to always talk to people about their their why. And you guys are very passionate about what you want, what you're doing. You took that leap of faith. You have a big goal that I can feel in my bones you're going to reach. So what drove you to this business? And I will say this too, you, you talked a little bit about it. It sounds like you saw a gap like early on, like at a young age, you saw a gap um, in a place you can help people. So talk a little bit just about your why and like what made you want to start this business? Well, my why is because I, I, like you said, it was a gap that was needed just for me being an athlete, a former athlete, and I didn't have the guidance or I didn't know where to, what to do. For the next step, a lot of athletes don't know that, especially a lot of athletes don't think about after the ball stops dribbling or when they get hurt, like, what can I do? Like, a lot of athletes don't think that far to really think about their life. Because you got to understand, a lot of these athletes, they don't know how to handle their money. They don't know where to put their money at. They don't know how to flip their money to make them more money. And so I think that with what we're doing is that We're teaching those things like up next, like, hey, branding and marketing, you can make money off of that. 
having a business, you can make money off of that. Just setting yourself up for the future. Like a lot of sports agencies or consulting firms, I don't think they teach that. And I think that needs to be taught because I wasn't taught that. Nobody told me that. They didn't ask me what you're going to do after you finish playing basketball. And so that's why when we get those clients, we want them to understand like, hey, we know you want to play basketball, but let, like, let's have a backup plan and let's figure a game plan out on when you finish playing basketball. Do you want to retire early? Because I know a lot of people want to retire early. That was my why. Like, I feel like a lot of athletes need that help, that assistance. And a lot of people are not willing to give those athletes that knowledge, like, and help them. Celia, what about you? My why is very similar to hers. I think that's why we work so good because our visions align. Like, mine came from when I was at Memphis. I, I had five players. I call them my Fab Five. Shout out to them. They know who they are. With them, I just noticed how in that role, they're just looked at as an athlete. The institution doesn't care if they graduate, don't care if they get a job, don't care if they're successful at all. So when I took to those five and I handheld them and made sure they got what they needed outside of school, like I think that's where the trust came. And that's when I saw the light bulb, like this is what I love to do. This is my passion. So what can I do with this to help athletes and do what I love every day? So that's kind of where my why came from is just I saw how they weren't getting help. They weren't getting the help they need. And then they graduate and they're still calling me like, Miss Cece, I need a job. Miss Cece, I don't know how to open an account. Miss Cece, can you help me find an apartment? So those things weren't being taught to them. So I think that's kind of where my passion came from was just, I don't want this to happen to any more athletes. If I can touch them and help them, I'm going to do my best, you know, to do that. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure they're successful in life. I love that. Both of those are really inspiring. And there's women out there who I know I've talked to who have said, I want to start my own business. I I don't know if I should. Uh, Some have started their own business and are doing it as a side hustle. What advice would you give to women who want to start their own business, whether it's working with athletes or not? My advice, I say go for it. I'm big on like, if you go for it and you keep going for it, like the universe can only give you, you know, what you're asking for, what you're working for. Like, so I just say go for it. Never, you know, doubt yourself. Never question what you want, what your passion is and what you're going to do, because in the end, it's like you're going to be successful if you keep going at it you're going to be successful because you put in the time and you put in the effort to do it. So never be scared to fail or you don't think you're going to be successful because you will, if you just put in a, it, you will be successful when you start it. Like you just got to start it and go for it. A hundred percent agree with you. I also know it's hard out there. Where do you get that? Like you, I love this confidence and what you're saying. Um, I, I love that just putting it out there and the universe is going to conspire to help you. Where does that come from that motivation on a daily basis? Now I know, I know Celia helps you too, but before her, where did you get that? Cause this didn't just come about in the last year. Because I'm an athlete. <laughs> I mean, I play basketball. So it's like one of those things just like, it's natural to me. Like, you know, athletes got their confidence or whatever, but I, I like, to be honest, I never, I, I have not always been confident about the business aspects of things because I didn't really know what I was doing, but I always did my research. I'm, I'm always reading. I'm always keeping up with the times and stuff like that. But my confidence just came from, I know me. And I know that I'm a hard worker. I know I get stuff done. And I know that at the end of the day, like I'm going to be successful, whichever path I take. And so my confidence just come from just believing in myself. Like it starts with yourself. If anybody else don't believe in me, I know I believe in me. That's what a lot of people lack is confidence. And so when you don't have the confidence, it shows up in your in other areas of your life. And so you have to be, you have to be confident. You have to love you, be confident and just go for it. Even if I am good at it or not, I'm going to learn how to do it. So that's where it came from. That was like a, a, a mini Ted talk right there. I love that. That was good advice. Uh, Celia, do you, what advice would you give women who are trying to get going? Make a plan and go for it. Like I'm, I'm with her on that. 
Because if you, the longer you sit and ponder and wait and you just keep putting more years behind you that you haven't started your vision, you know, so I'm a journal. I write a journal every day. So it's just like make it plain, write it down, put it up on the wall and go for it. Don't let anybody stop you or hold you back. So you journal every day. Like what, what is that like? So somebody who's thinking, all right, I need to start getting into journaling. Maybe it'll help me get out of my head. What do you journal about? Let me, let me rephrase that. I don't mean like, what do you write? I don't want to be nosy, <laughs> but like what, what, on a high level, what do you focus on every day? Is it gratitude? Is it just free writing? It's a mixture of both like gratitude and just my journey of what I've been through and kind of healing and just writing out what I want to achieve and what I could have did different today, what I can do better and be thankful for tomorrow. So it's just, it's almost stress relieving for me just to get all my thoughts out of the day. I love that. And I, you know, here's the problem. Black don't crack. And I cannot tell how old you guys are, but you look super young. <laughs> you look, give me, give us a decade. I don't want to ask anybody their age, but like twenties, thirties. I know you're not in your forties. No way. I'm 50. Now I'm just playing. <laughs> I was like, no. I, no I'm, just playing. I'm 31. I'm 31 and I'm yes. proud of it. So I'm 33. So we're right behind each other. All right. I'm 42. <laughs> I feel like we're sharing. So let's let's just share here. Yes. Oh, you don't look 42 <laughs> you definitely at all. don't look 42. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank I thought she was like our age. I get that a lot. I don't I don't get carded anymore, but I still get the I thought you were our age in the mid 30s or the 30s. And I'll I'll take it. I will take it. Um, yeah. So you guys, I mean, you're doing some incredible work at a young age. Ooh, I can't wait to see you in the sports business journal, 40 under 40. I see it. All right. Now it is time for the rapid fire questions. And thank you for sharing with everybody your age. Cause I think sometimes that is a, a mental block for people. I have mm-hmm. to keep getting more experience. I gotta, I gotta work some more. I have to reach a certain level before in your example, before athletes take me seriously. I love that you guys shared. So thank you for sharing that. All right. So I'm going to have Chris, you go first. Celia, you're going to need to just plug your ears or something or mute us, or I don't don't know how you do that. And then we'll wave to you when it's time for you to go. All right. So Chris, are you ready? Rapid fire questions, 12 questions. First thing that comes to your mind, don't be nervous. You know what? Someone did this to me yesterday and there was only four of them. And I, I literally got nervous, but don't be nervous. Don't be I'm nervous. nervous. <laughs> I, just, I just passed my nervous energy to you. <laughs> right. You said, you said don't be nervous and I'm nervous. Okay. I'm ready. All right. You got this. What is your favorite sports moment? Oh, the WNBA draft this past, this past mm. year. I, I love yes. the, all the women. Yes. <laughs> yes. I loved, I loved seeing all that. And I loved all the coverage. Okay. What is something people always get yeah. wrong about you? I have an attitude. Me too. All right. Sorry, <laughs> this, this is not about me. Okay. So what is one food you wouldn't want to give up? Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a morning or a night person? Morning. <laughs> Favorite holiday? Thanksgiving. What job would you be absolutely horrible at doing? <sighs> horrible. A janitor. <laughs> <laughs> what product would you seriously stockpile if you found out they were going out of business? Tissue. Tissue. <laughs> Tissue. <laughs> what is your favorite app? Uh, Instagram. <laughs> All right. Who's your biggest inspiration in life? Michelle Obama. Oh, good one. As a child, what did you wish to become when you grew up? A WNBA player. <laughs> Yep, I thought you were going to say that. All right, last one. Finish this <laughs> sentence. The future of women working in sports is? Inspiring. Yes. Inspiring. Or is, um, you know, running a multi-million dollar consulting firm, whatever. <laughs> Period. <laughs> yes. All right, you're off the hook now. It is time for Celia. Celia, you ready? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't overthink it whatever comes to your mind what is your favorite sports moment lebron won his first championship oh good one okay what is something people always get wrong about you that i mean <laughs> what is one i'm i'm laughing not because i think you're mean but because uh chris had the a similar answer what is one food you wouldn't want to give up chipotle <laughs> <laughs> You need to meet my husband. All right. Are you a morning or a night person? Night. Favorite holiday? Christmas. What job would you 
absolutely be horrible at doing? Landscape. <laughs> <laughs> what product would you seriously stockpile if you found out they weren't going to sell it anymore? <laughs> Candles. <laughs> Candles. All right. Yeah, I just ordered a bunch. What is your favorite app? Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your biggest inspiration in life? That's tough. That'd be uh, my mom and Michelle Obama. Oh, you guys keep answering similar or the same. Uh, as a child, what did you wish to become when you grew up? A dentist. Oh, huh, interesting. Sorry, I'm really bad at rapid fire. Okay, finish this sentence. Last one. The future of women working in sports is... Going to go to another level. Yes, a multi-million dollar level. All right, <laughs> ladies, this has been fantastic. I loved learning about you. I loved actually meeting you virtually beyond Instagram, which is how I found you. Tell everybody how to, so two sides to it. First, tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. So if somebody wanted to just talk to you and learn more about your business as a, a woman in sports and wanted to network, how can they get in touch with you? Um, you can follow us on Up Next Sports Consulting. Also, our website, we have it where you can email us, upnextsportsconsultingfirm.com. And then our email is upnextsportsconsulting at gmail.com. Fantastic. And I'm assuming if there happens to be an athlete listening and they want to know how to get in touch with you, you were just speaking their language same way as that that's how they would get in touch with you? Yes. <laughs> All right. Easy stuff. Keeping it simple. Thank yes. you both so much for this time. Um, I enjoy talking to you and getting to know you a little more. Thanks for having us. I appreciate it so much. It was a fun interview. I love it. So what did you think of this episode? Do you know another woman who works or is aspiring to work in sports? Would you do me a favor and share this with them? It would mean so much if together we could support and inspire other women on their journey. And let's stay connected. I love meeting and talking to new people. Follow me on Instagram at Jahan Blake and join the free Game of Her Own community by visiting jahanblake.com. I can't wait to meet you.